Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this sunrise um, snow scene of a local park quite close to me. I took the photograph a few years ago um, and I'm going to just sort of use it as a loose basis for a painting but trying to get that lovely light that you get in the early morning um, and simplifying the trees as much as possible. So I'm going to be starting off with Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet, um, which means it's about 11 inches by um, 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. I've taped it to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and I will paint with the board at an angle of about 45 degrees. And that means that gravity will help with the wet in wet painting process. I'm going to be using my carpenter's pencil to very roughly sketch out the positions of the trees in the foreground and those stretching back along the path on the left and across the background. And then there's a few little buildings on the tree line on the right. And I'm gonna keep those very, very simple. Uh, you may be able to see there are some rugby goalposts there. I'm going to use my artistic license to exclude those and just keep this as a very simple, loose suggestion of this beautiful scene. I like to sketch out paintings like this with my carpenter's pencil. Um, the thick, heavy lead um, allows me to just keep the sketch really loose. I can't get bogged down with detail. And often if you use a fine leaded pencil, it's sort of tempting to really get involved with more detail than you need. And you can sometimes then end up with um, a fussy painting rather than a loose one. So I'm going to start off and wet my page all over. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch mottler brush for this. You can use any wash brush, but I'm really enjoying using this synthetic brush at the moment. I'm going to cut round my buildings and leave my buildings dry. That means that as the washes run, uh, those buildings will remain unpainted paper. And that means that I can keep them nice and sharp um, sort of nicely delineated against the softly diffused tree line that I'm going to put in wet in wet. This is a mixture of cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and it's got a little bit of neutral tint in it just to sort of bring the tone down a little bit. There's plenty of light in the sky as the sun is about to rise, but um, it's not as intense as a daytime sky. In with some um, alizarin crimson, and this helps to keep my blue separate from my yellow. As today I'm using a nice cool yellow, that's lemon yellow, and lemon yellow and this blue make a lovely green if they're mixed together, and I want to try and avoid green in the sky if possible. So I'm using the alizarin crimson as a sort of barrier. Then I can put a little bit of, a little bit more blue over the horizon line and that just starts to build up um, some slightly darker tones there for my distant tree line. And then I'm going to mix some alizarin crimson into my blue colour and that will give me uh, the very pale shadowed colour of the snow. The sun hasn't risen yet and so the snow isn't white. If you look at the photograph, it's in shadow and this is what I want to create using this colour. Remember it will lighten back as it dries and it'll end up being a lot paler than this but it will give me this lovely um, shadowed look for this early morning painting. I can put some of this colour where my distant trees are going to be and it will softly blend and diffuse into the sky colours and the ground colours. I 
and then with a clean damp brush I can just um, pull out a little bit more light on that far horizon line and pull some light across in a shallow diagonal um, to sort of kind of delineate softly and subtly the shape of the land and the aerial perspective. And then lastly, while it's still um, damp, the paper is still damp, I can mix up a drier mix of brown, which has been made with my cobalt blue and burnt sienna. And this slightly drier mix will still diffuse on the page and soften, but it'll hold its own against the sky colour because it's slightly richer and drier. And I can try and see if I can get a bit of sort of a uh, dry brush with even drier mix so that it sort of get that hit and miss look that will begin to build up this thick tangle of winter tree branches and canopies that goes back into the distance along the path on the left and then I can do the same with getting in those hints of darker tone and brown but still at this mid-tone level across my tree line being careful not to paint over my buildings. This is the corner of a plastic store card and I'm etching through some branches just briefly through the damp paint here and that will just start off the look of the trunks and the branches and I can put a few little etch marks through my distant tree line too. And now I'm going to leave it to dry completely and then come back and work on the trees. So here it is, it's all dried back nice and pale, but I've still got that nice sense of early morning light. I'm now going to start with the distant trees at the back of this path or these sort of mid to distant trees. And I'm using a small calligraphy brush and a mixture of Paint, um, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, a bit of Payne's grey, a little bit of neutral tint um, and I'm being quite careful to keep these trees in the distance fairly pale and fairly thin and I'm just literally putting in these um, vertical strokes just leaning in very slightly, smudging out if the marks go on there a little bit too dark to create depth and distance. Um, the distant trees there going off into the distance need to be fairly pale and also quite close together. And now using um, a Da Vinci synthetic spin uh, quill brush, I'm painting in this main foreground tree and I'm going over my pencil guidelines. The same mixture but this time it's a little bit drier and I'm aiming to get some nice dark trunks and branches but also to vary it up with some dry brush with some sort of hit and miss marks um, and I'm taking the pressure off and trying to use the point to get some nice sort of thin ragged branches as well. I don't want to put too many branches in because a lot of the small bare winter twigs will be put in with dry brush but I just need to get enough of a structure in first as these trees in the foreground are um, an important part of the painting. So I want to make sure that they sort of look fairly convincing. Leaning them in slightly towards the right as well helps with the composition. It helps lead the eye around the painting. This is my plastic store card and I'm pulling it through the damp paint and it's giving me paler marks which indicate branches coming out from the front of the trees and around the trees behind them and just adds a bit of variety to the tone um, and the textures in these foreground trees. And now for a few branches just coming in from trees that are out of sight of this picture plane and it just brings them in across this top left corner.
and now using um, a size 14 synthetic Escoda mop brush just to bring over some uh, dry brush over those branches um, to indicate all those hundreds and thousands of little twigs. We'll be doing a little bit more to this later on, putting in some sort of slightly sort of browner, more golden dry brush marks once this has all dried um, to help to bring it together a little bit more. But now I'm going to go in with my small calligraphy brush and join up a few of the branches up into these dry brush marks. Now I'm going to put in some tree shadows and I'm going to make them a little bit stronger than they are in my photograph. And I think that will just strengthen up the composition a little bit more and just ground those trees and emphasise the light on the snow a little bit more too. This is a mixture of cobalt blue, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And this gives me this lovely violet colour for the shadows and I can darken it up a little bit here and there by adding a bit of neutral tint or maybe Payne's grey depending on whether I want a warmer or a cooler neutral just to accent the shadows and I'm bringing the shadows across the path um, keeping my marks fairly sort of getting thinner as the path goes further back into the distance but keeping this shadow diagonal orientation which follows the perspective of the land. And now the dry brush is dry, so now this more golden colour, um, which is raw sienna, um, and just a touch of the brown colour added into the raw sienna, and then linking back through by scraping through that paint with the card, just to bring a few lighter branches and just some added texture. Again, linking with the small calligraphy brush as well, just building up that tangle of twigs a little bit more, but trying not to overdo it. And now just using my synthetic flat brush um, and that same dark color, but just slightly um, thinned down so it's not quite as dark as the foreground brown I'm going to um, just put a bit more definition and a few tree trunks into the um, distant tree line just dotting in a few darker stronger canopies here and there and some shadows at ground level um, to begin to go around and paint around the buildings um, so that through negatively painting the trees and shapes around the buildings it will bring those buildings forward so that they stand out nicely. And then going to some much darker accents here and there just gives me those nice shadows, uh, draws the eye towards that tree line um, towards those darker, stronger tones and also towards the buildings. But not too much dark, just enough um, to show the deep shadows where the sun hasn't sort of hit those trees yet. Any small brush will do for these marks. This is my small calligraphy brush, uh, but anything that you're comfortable with that makes a good range of marks, but keeps a nice sort of um, straightish edge for the um, where the snow meets the distant tree line. And that gives us that nice crisp look of the freshly uh, fallen snow. And then extra dark around the building on this side and then I can pull up um, some um, simple tree branches um, through and around the buildings, keeping it nice and simple. That just sort of closes off that side of the painting quite nicely. 
and then a bit of raw sienna just over the um, front walls of the buildings leaving the roofs white um, to show the fallen snow on the rooftops and then just maybe dab off with a tissue and that is a quick easy way of making sure you get a little bit of variety of tone and texture there without sort of overpainting it. And once that wall's dry, I can um, put a bit of shadow underneath the eaves of the roof and just a few dots here and there for windows and suggestions of maybe doors, that sort of thing, just to break up those large white um, plain walls a little bit and add a bit more interest to the buildings. Don't overdo this. Keep it nice and loose if you can. Then once the buildings are done, um, you can check and see if you need to balance things out a bit. I think I need a few more branches over here. Now, I'm not sure whether I've got enough branches um, and dry brush over in my foreground trees on the left, uh, but I'm not going to do anything with them yet. What I'm going to do is remove the tape from my painting and seeing it with a clean white border is a little bit like seeing it with a frame and seeing it with fresh eyes and I'll be able to see whether I need to do anything else to the painting um, once that tape's removed and then putting it against a clean board really helps to sort of assess it with a fresh eye. So today with today's painting um, I can see now that there's a few adjustments that I need to make um, I'm going to put in a few sort of sticks and twigs coming out from the base of this main tree just to break up that area at ground level a little bit more. And then just a little bit more over this side to this large tree because I think that balances out the composition really nicely over on the right side. I can smudge out with my fingers softly any of the branches to make them a little bit less distinct. And now over on this side, I think um, what I haven't got is that sort of arch effect that I could see happening in my photograph where the branches on each side of the path sort of meet and tangle. So I'm going to um, just put in a few more branches so that I get that slightly heavier effect of branches, twigs, etc., etc., just linking across the pathway. It's a little bit disjointed at the moment, but if I can link the pathway across the top a little bit more, I think I'll be happier. So here's the finished painting and I think I've just about got the effects that I wanted. Um, I'm really glad I put that violet wash across the snow and that gives it that nice sort of shadowed look. Um, it's very, very faint, but it works better than leaving the paper um, white and unpainted. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you'll try something similar for yourselves. Um, let me know how you get on in the comments below. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.